Hey, Billy. Are you ready for our meeting? Hey, Adrian. I don't see anyone else here. Is it just us today? Yes. Seems everyone else bailed. Um, if that's the case, can we hold off for just a couple of minutes? I'm trying a new deployment, and I need a couple more minutes to get to a breaking point. Sure. No problem. Um, I can help if you want. Yeah. I mean, if you've got time, that would be great. Yep. Um, so I've got a customer that's got some requirements I'm not real familiar with. They've got a legacy application they want to containerize and require some additional interfaces to make it work properly. Now, I know multi-CNI will allow you to run multiple CNIs for a container, which will basically add multiple interfaces to the container. But it's the first time I've really had to do it with SRV VFs. I was able to bring up the pod, but I can't tell which of the additional interfaces is used for what. Okay, uh, do you have a diagram or something? Can you show me what you're trying to do? Um, yeah, I think I got one here. Um, all right, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna share my screen. Hold on just a second, I found it. All right, sharing, uh, can you see the drawing? Yes. Okay, so as you can see from the picture, they need a high-speed interface to receive some video stream in on one interface. Mm -hmm. The app does its transcoding magic and then sends a modified stream out a second interface. These video streams are at high data rates and need to be on separate interfaces. Okay, um, I have a 5G case that is quite similar, um, at least, uh, the interfaces, uh, interface requirements is um, similar enough. In fact, this kind of setups is more common than you think. Um, let's take a look at your cluster. Do you have uh, a terminal around? Let's see yeah, actually, so um, I'll share, but let me send you some here. Here's the login stuff. And um, okay. now you can maybe Tmux in. Here, let me share it. There we go. Yep. Yep, I'm in. Okay, um, so here's what I have so far. I found some SRV documentation. So I've got enough that I was able to take my SRV capable NIC and divide it into multiple virtual functions so that multiple containers can share the same NIC. Hang on, I got this command in somewhere in one of my notepads. Um, all right. There you go. So now you can see um, I've got these two interfaces with four VFs each. Mm -hmm. All right. So now if I show you my QSTL, get pods. All right. So there's my test pod. And um, if we go and look at it, um, so you can see here, um, I've got E0 for my default network and then a couple of net interfaces for the additional interfaces. But I don't know which net, net one or net two is used for what. Um, so um, I'm logging, I'm looking at logs and trying to hard code some values into my sample container to make this work out. Okay, gotcha. Um, I don't think you have to hard code anything. Let me jump in real quick um, okay. and see what versions you're running. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, I see that you're running Multis and the device plugin. So, um, let me see. Let's start with the device plugin for, for instance. Um, okay, you're running 3.3.1, which is fairly recent. That's good. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check the uh, Multus version just in case. I want to make sure you have all the changes um, that we've recently added. What changes are you looking for? Um, Okay, I'm, I'm looking for some changes, the device info um, changes. The um, Network Plumbing Working Group recently um, applied, recently approved a new spec called the device info spec. It specifies okay. how additional device data can be passed into the pod. Look, if everything is working, the information that you're looking for should be here.
Yes, there it is. Oh. Uh, you see, in the pods annotations, there is a network status field. And within that field, uh, there is a JSON object for each network interface. Okay. Uh, within that object, uh, there, we have recently added the device info part. And that is the information of your hardware device that is nicely associated with your network interface. Um, now, as how as that association was actually made, um, it's Kubelet, the one that allocates the device depending on the device plugins reported pools. Um, okay, hang on. That was a little fast for a lot of components. Um, maybe we can draw a picture or something with all the components and how they talk to each other. Sure. Um, actually, I'm working on some slides for KubeCon. So let me paste a link in the chat. If okay. you open the link, I yeah. have a deck here. Um, let's just jump to slide seven. Okay, um, here, I'll put it in the shared screen so we can see it. Can you see it? Uh, yes. So um, there in that diagram shows a typical SRIOV um, deployment. So as you already know, Multis is the one that allows you to call different CNI plugins to attach additional networks, right? Right, right. Now that part I got, yes. Okay. Well, uh, when it calls SRIOV CNI, it adds an extra parameter with the PCI address that it has to configure, uh, the PCI address of the VF. Okay. Then uh, the SRIOV CNI just configures the networking aspects of the VF. For example, MAC address, VLAN tag, uh, the trusted mode, and so on. Okay, uh, um, I kind of get that part. Um, I see the SRV device plugin in your drawing. Um, now, what's the purpose of device plugin again? Yeah, in the case of SRIOV, uh, we need to make sure that we properly manage the limited hardware resources that we have in the node. In this case, the virtual functions of our SRIOV NIC. Also, we need to modify the pod's runtime spec to provide access to those hardware resources. Okay. Basically, that is what the, what the device plugin does for us. Um, it is a daemon set that sits on the node. It discovers the available hardware resources, ar arranges them into pools, into resource pools, uh, defined in a config map, and makes these pools available to Kubelet. Okay, now um, I do have a remember creating my config map. Um, hang on, I'm gonna switch back to the terminal here for a second. All right, so so here is my config map that I created. All right, can you see that? Yep. Yes, it looks like uh, you set up the config map correctly. At least. Um, uh, that config map is saying it's defining two uh, resource pools. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the resource pools will um, will pick up all the VFs from PF0, and the other uh, resource pool will pick up all the VFs from PF1. Is that what you wanted? Yes, yes. So that sounds good. I think I got a little lucky there on what I copied. So um... Okay. Now let's look at the network attachment definition. Did you create one of those? Yes, yes. All right. So, yeah. all right. So here's the YAML I used to create that. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, uh, your network attachment definition references the pools that you've created in the config map. So that's CTX6, PF0, and PF1. Okay. You see that? Yes, I do. I do. Okay, so um, here, let me go back to that picture so I can look at that again. All right, okay. here we go. So, so um, having that reference um, properly done, uh, how it works is um, when the network attachment de re um, definition references the, um, the correct pool and a pot is allocated um, that uses one of those network attachment definitions, kubelet selects a free device from the pool and asks the device plugin to provide the uh, device information. The response contains information about Linux devices 
that um, have to be added to the runtime spec, mount points, and environmental variables. Okay. So basically, that is how the pod has then access to, uh, to a specific PCI address. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is uh, that that information flows directly from kubelet to the pod, and um, it gets to the pod in a very limited way. So you don't have like the context of the CNI interface with it. Okay, um, and you said there was this new spec that was written. How does that tie in with what we're talking about here? Well, the spec changes this into the diagram in slide 10. 10, hold on. All right, there's slide 10. Yes, there you go. So as you see now, the device plugin uh, now writes a file in the notes file system. That right. is, is, that then the, is that the device info file? Exactly, the device okay. info file. Okay. Um, it writes the file in a predefined path with a standardized format. And uh, once the file is written, Multus will then pick it up and uh, write it into the network status annotation under the right interface. Okay, so this device file is actually on the node. So you're saying right. I could troubleshoot some of the device related issues just by looking at that file on my node. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. All right, hang on. Let me go back here and see if I can take a look at it. Do you, know, do you remember what the name of that file is or where it is? Uh, it's in slash var run k8s okay. uh, cni, you know, tap your way. Okay, yeah. Um, device info slash dp for device plugin okay you should have all the oh, yes oh there yeah there's go. a couple of them there all right so it's a json format so if you just if you come pipe it to jq if you have jq uh, installed um so we can see the json okay content correct all right that looks a lot like the device info stuff right there that was in the annotations. Uh, yes, that's exactly right. So um, if you look into the um, annotations again, you should see that that JSON uh, part yes. is, has been added to the uh, network status annotation in the right interface. Okay, yeah, let me go back here and see if I can figure this out. Um, okay, yeah, so I see that PCI address in the device info that we talked about, and then there's that SROV-net0 that we we're talking about in the name field. Cool. Correct. So um, the SROV-net0 is the name of your uh, network attachment, and the uh, net1 is the name of the interface um, seen inside the pod's uh, network namespace. All right, cool. All right, I want to stop sharing here. That's, that was good. That's good. All right, so um, so we wait a minute. You wrote a new spec just so we could figure out which interface belongs to which network? No, that was just one of the added benefits. It allows network um, uh, new accelerated network devices to be added to uh, Kubernetes more easily. So recently, I've been um, working on this technology called VDPA. It exposes accelerated um, Brita IO compatible interfaces. So mm -hmm. it supports um, exposing a normal NetDef to be used by standard containers, but it also supports exposing a special char device called vhost or vhost VDPA device um, that can be used by DPDK apps, for example, um, uh, to do memory mapping um, basically to, mem to, ma to map the memory directly uh, from the NIC to the application. Okay. So, so the NIC can uh, DMA directly into the app. Um, so this is uh, one of the use cases. And as you can imagine, without this spec, uh, it will be impossible for the pod to know all the extra details needed to consume these new devices. Okay. 
So, um, so it sounds like it makes um, bringing up these newer network devices easier and also, but more in a standardized way instead of using, I don't know, maybe proprietary environmental variables or something like that, right? Right, so we wanted to um, have a uh, clear spec to um, um, basically make uh, pot on pots and uh, application developers lives uh, easier. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, the spec supports a number of uh, different network devices. The IOV devices, uh, like in your case, MEM, IF, DDPA, and some more. Um, so it's easily extendable. Uh, it's just a JSON format. So it's easily extendable and um, it should make it easy for new technologies to be integrated into Kubernetes, even if they're not based on the SRIOV device plugin. Yeah, but are there any cases where devices are created by like a CNI plugin instead of the, you know, any of the number of device plugins? Um, yes, for example, the host device, uh, uh, CNI and also the um, user space CNI that um, exposes virtual user devices. The spec also contemplates that use case um, and it supports vhost user devices. Uh, in that case, how it works is uh, it works in a slightly different way. But um, so how it works is the CNI exposes a new capability and if Multis detects this capability, it will pass down basically the path where the CNI has to put the, the device info file that we just saw. Hmm. Okay, so you're saying that the CNI instead of the device plugin now does all the work, but it's, it has to deal with creating this file and making sure it exists and then writing the file and taking care of all that tedious stuff, right? Um, well, yes, uh, but uh, most of the functionality has already been implemented in the uh, library. Um, it's called the network attachment definition client. And so um, the CNI should just import that library uh, to basically write the file. And once that file is written, then Multis will take care of the rest, basically. Oh, cool. Okay. So all now all this information is ultimately available from with the pod, right? Right. Well, good. All right. So now I just have to write a script or a small program to parse all this data in the container. I'm not really looking forward to trying to parse JSON in a script, but I guess I can do that. Well, I told you, I've already been through this. Um, let me send you a link. You're going to like it. Okay. Um, yep. Open that link. Okay. I got it. Let me, let me share it back over here. Um, all right, sharing. All right, uh, app net utility. Okay, I see. Wait, this is a Go module, right? Um, I think the only issue is that everything I'm dealing with is gonna be in C. Drop down to the API section. APIs, okay. See, there are Go and C bindings. Oh, yeah, there's Go and C, I like that, cool. All right, and um, I see there are three APIs, um, one to get the CPU data, um, one for get retrieving huge page data, and then the third one is to retrieve all the interface data. Uh, so has this repo been updated to support the new device info spec we were talking about? Yep, it, it's very useful. It hides all the complexities of parsing the network status annotation, um, or environmental variables, and system data, and it offers a nice high-level API. All right, um, there's a lot here. I see um, test pods, uh, DPDK app um, container images. Um, yeah, there's a lot here. Yeah, it has some sample code on how to use um, the APIs. Oh, all right, well, that'd be useful. Um, all right, so what's this SRV VF development? All right, that's a lot of stuff um, we've been talking about here. I see the network attachment definitions and config maps. Um, so, um, so even if I decide not to use it, it shows all the different places in a container to collect the data and how to utilize it. 
Um, this looks useful. I'll start playing with this. Um, do you have a list of all those repos that we talked about? I said, what was it network client or network something? Um, yeah. Yeah, I got a list. Uh, let me show you. Man, I, I need to um, invite you to my Kubecon presentation. You're just asking the right questions. So you have my um, deck. Yep, still got around. it. Yep. So I think it's on slide 13. If you okay. tap there. Okay, um, I see, yeah, Multis and um, SRV network device plugin, some of the stuff we've been talking about. Oh, there it is, network attachment client. Um, I see most of these projects are under the network plumbing working group. Um, I thought that um, the network plumbing working group just wrote the multi-net spec that Multis was coded to, and that was it. Uh, yes, that was some time ago, but they have recently approved a new, um, open governance model. They have brought together many projects, um, including all of those. And now it's a very healthy and diverse community. Well, this is perfect. I'll try to use some of this in my work. Um, but you're going to be out, aren't you, if I run into some issues? Yeah, for two weeks, actually. You still have that KubeCon slide? Yeah, uh, now true. go to the next uh, uh, slide. Okay. And you'll see, yeah, there you go. Those are the upstream meetings. Uh, you have links to the meeting docs and you have the uh, meeting cadence there. Um, all right, I, I like it, but you know, it's one of those things. I'm still like new to all this and learning all these technologies. I think if I went to one of these upstream communities, I'd just get lost and feel kind of out of place a little bit. Everyone there was new to it at some point. If you have any issue, just reach out to them. They are um, a very, uh, uh, very kind, and they will be happy to help you. I'm sure. Oh well, good. That was real helpful. I really do appreciate it. I'm sorry for delaying our original meeting. No problem. What What was the original meeting for? I've already forgotten. Uh, it's our virtual beer o'clock Zoom. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry to delay that for work stuff. Uh, let me go grab a beer. Yeah.